Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? What you're about to watch and listen to is the one original 100th episode of the Mileless Horror Podcast that I filmed way back a year ago with uh, Scott Dieterman and Gary, aka Spaz. Um, through the tough times, we had to postpone this, and it was on the shelf for a while. But I'm finally glad I get to show you this episode. This was an episode that I love filming. And just rewatching it, I, I can't wait for you guys to see it. So, without further ado, I now present to you the Mindless Horror Podcast with special guests Scott Dieterman and Gary, aka Spaz. Enjoy. It's showtime. I mean, just before we started recording. Scott was like, you you done messed up, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, I don't think we have any idea where this is going to go. I, I, I sure as hell don't. No way, dude. It doesn't either. So, I mean, whatever happens, happens, Anthony. I don't know. I don't know, man. You have to see what goes, what goes down. I'm excited because this can go one. This can go like a million different ways, and I'm 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 okay with whatever way it goes, honestly. <laughs> okay, good. Because hey, Gary, hey old fart, why don't you touch base on what your deal, like what your history is? Because I mean, I've already done a podcast, so people know mine. All right, I don't. Well, I, was, I don't know where I'm going with. I just I to start with us. Ninety ninety three, Lair the Vampire. You know, <laughs> oh, man, ninety three. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were bad boys we're, in the early nineties. Yeah, the reason why I bring this up is because Scott and I were together, which was there rad. You, you know, <laughs> I was this punk kid with no control, you know, <laughs> and I get lucky enough to put in Lair the Vampire, which is the, the like, well, in my opinion, the second greatest maze of all time. You nice. know, I think it's so gonna, many ways. I'm just going to say, Gary, though, I think it's the best vampire maze of all time. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, what's your favorite maze of all time? My favorite maze of all time? Dude, yeah. I'm gonna date myself way back. Bates Motel. Oh, good. Damn. I'm an asylum guy. Dude, on the on the <laughs> lawn, crossing the church, epic crew. Yeah. You know, I, for years I didn't think anything could beat Lair. And finally I'm going through the asylum one night and I'm just like, these guys are kicking so much ass and there's so much scaring and so much energy and so much chaos and so you know, and I'm like, I, I gotta give them the gotta give them the trophy. They were better than Lair. Well, nice. see, the, the biggest thing for me with like Lair the Vampire, why, why I think it's the best um, vampire maze of all time is because like the initial when you first when you first walked into the maze, the first room had an actual full on scene from the movie. Like, well, not from the movie, but like it, it was based on Bram Stoker's Dracula. And yeah. there's actually a scene where there's actors where you got you got. You know, the vampire king that pops up on, a, on the balcony, says his speech, the room goes black, and all of a sudden he pops up behind the bed where the chick's laying down, and comes out, and he, he overtakes her type of thing. And that was awesome. I got a story about that, but we'll get to that. Yeah. So well, there's, there's so many stories about Lair, you know. With, I just remember, like, people weren't going into the maze one night, so they grabbed mm-hmm. Scott, Big Mike, and me and had yeah. us go out in front sliding and scaring. We were, we were supposed to scare people into the maze. Yeah, <laughs> you know, which is awesome, awesome. you know, because you never hear about like the you know, monsters going to go outside the maze and actually scare anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, Anthony, are you aware of where, um, well, in Fiesta Village, where Studio K used to be located? Uh, I know, I know of Fiesta Village. I know where it was located, though. Okay, so when you come into Fiesta coming off of the Midway coming from Ghost Town side, yeah. um, as you come into the far right, past the food courts or the, the uh, okay. food windows in that corner where the carousel is that's yeah. where Studio K used to be and that's where they had Lair the Vampire and there was an area right there it was perfect for us it was slurry coated asphalt and that whole section is where Gary myself and and Big Mike used to work outside sliding it was so fun and fast light of heaven right there if you ask oh, me dude, right? was, yeah. righteous dude Night, yeah. 94 that's you know you know mm-hmm. Uh, it's where Jaguar is now. Okay. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about Jaguar. Yeah. In, uh, <laughs> well, November 1st, they, they took the – Haunt ended October 31st, 94. November 1st, they took the bulldozer and bulldozed Studio K. 
Yep. Gone they, they, ice. They, next day they were there tearing it up. Yep. They they wasted no time on that and they were just like, we got a job, let's do it. Yeah, I was so bummed. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's my home. They're, they're steamrolling it. Yeah, it was <laughs> like a piece of the wood or something like that, you know, take it home. <laughs> yeah. Well, that thing, that place was big back in the, the uh, mid 80s to the early 90s. You know, like you said, 94, they bulldozed it because, you know, it was like a, it was a dance club. Same thing with um, Cloud Nine, you know, Boardwalk uh, Ballroom. That was called Cloud Nine, and that was a another dance area, and that was always a big draw for the for the kids back then. Jesus, yeah, yeah. I'm dating us, Gary. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we, we, got, we got more stories because of our age. Yeah, think, we do. Yeah. No, I think that's the best thing, man. Over the years, you just you just get them stories and you just keep it going, man. You just you just you share down the knowledge with the with the with you know the the younger generation. That way, they get it. They get a sense of what happened back in the day, right there. I love hearing that. Well, yeah. the, all the rules that they have now compared to all the stuff we got away with back then. You know, Oof. I mean, hey, I had a spot in my maze. I was never there. You know. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The, I would say that our boss, um, our supervisor Ron, at the time. Like he, Gary more so than me, but he had a hard time keeping us in our assigned areas when he had yeah. to put us back inside. You know, I mean, I liked my area, but I liked moving around a little bit too. Definitely. So, Where were you in the maze, Scott? Um, I was actually, depending on which year, but I was yeah. always either the room before or the room after Sandy's crypt room. Oh. So I think, I think part of it was the catacombs or the garden. Yeah. The garden maze. So, you know. That's where I always was because that was the best potential area for sliding, and that's what Ron wanted me to do. Yeah. You well, know? There, there was a there was a ramp in the graveyard off the off the graveyard that's perfect for sliding, and that's where I did all my sliding. That was at then, the exit. Then, then I was, what's that? That was at the exit, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember. And, uh, well, then I used to slide. I used to take people outside there. I used to chase people from Lair all the way down into Camp Snoopy. Mm -hmm. and I was. <laughs> I was all, I mean, I did it was like, all right, I got a good chase. I'd be running. I'd be, you know, halfway yeah. down Camp Snoopy. They go run it back to my maze. Yeah. <laughs> See, here's, here's the thing. It's like Gary and I had two distinct, like distinctly different costumes. He was actually on the royalty side of the vampires. Like oh, he like, had, I was, I was a lower class vampire bat was my official title. Yeah. But you were <laughs> dressed up like upper class. Yeah. You had a button up shirt, a cape and boots. You know what I had? A jacked up robe with a full, you know, I had a full vampire prosthetic on with a ball cap. He yeah, had nice. He had his big ears with his when his hair out. This is freaking. He got he got the upper class stuff, and you got what was left over. <laughs> I, was, I was lower class. <laughs> I got the robe. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, I remember like, uh, running on the monster. rails through like the rooms. Uh, do you remember when uh, Big Mike used to get all the monsters into Sandy's chamber mm -hmm. and we'd lay all down? Mm -hmm. the, the, the queen's chamber was larger than you know normal rooms at haunt nowadays and we yeah. get like 20 monsters and lay them all on the ground and people come walking through the room stepping over monsters and on big mike's cue he had this like stab he banged the stab on the ground and like 20 monsters would jump up off the ground and just terrorize the room man that you, can't, that you never see happen nowadays it was so much fun yeah. You don't see a lot of that at all happen, you know, and it's like so many rules and stuff just for safety purposes. But, man, I would love to have seen that kind of stuff, man, because, like, that's what literally makes haunts for me. We don't we don't have any you don't have any footage of that, do you, Gary? No, none of it. I've got some I got maybe like 20 pictures from there. Yeah, you know? I don't have any from back then, you know, and they're, they're they're all bad and grainy and, you know, off of disposable cameras, whatever. Yeah. You know, because that's how it was done then. Okay. Oh yeah. Just gotta you know, pause for a second. I'm watching Anthony's face as we're talking here, Gary. He's go. He's going fanboy moment, dude. Yeah. I, I am. As in his great, totally fanboying right now. <laughs> I am, man. This is. I just, like I said, man. Demi was right. Just, just let you guys talk. We, we, we were just, we just sit back and just listen to these amazing stories, right. man. It's, it's awesome. Let me see. Let me see some bad. There was, there was a couple shows. There was a front show. Did you ever see the stage show? Where they had the, the, the they had a big they, they had the, the, the studio case stage they had a bed and you know hot chicks and hot vampires and they it was like the seduction room the last two the last two years of lair that's that's where the main entrance was with the stage and the bed that's where I was telling you where the king vampire came up on the balcony and then he well, disappeared there was the front room with the and then there was a stage there was two different areas yeah there was another one where they they took they 
they stole a they took a plant out of the out of the uh yes the that one yeah michelle potter i remember that girl yeah <laughs> they pulled her they pulled her out of the out of the group and yeah. they put her on a sacrifice table oh, i heard about that i've yeah. heard about that I, I i bought i brought in a bunch of bondage equipment so we could strap her actually to the table you know, I had all these leather straps at the time, and I came in, and I came on, like, dude, I got leather straps. Let's, you know, let's add this to the, because they were just supposed to put her on the table. So yeah. we were actually, like, leather strapping her down to the table. It was great. That's cool. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, that's what you can get away with, you know? Yeah, yeah. She probably hated, probably hated you guys that night, man. She really probably was like, oh. oh no, she loved it, you know? We were partying. She loved it. Dude, everyone loved it. It was like. You know, it was like eyes would light up, you know, you know oh, we're going to do this. All right. You know, there was enthusiasm for like stupid stuff, you know. Oh, yeah, dude, I love I love it. So, God, did you ever see me jump off the wall onto that stage? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here's okay. There was the stage and the stage was probably up at, you know, normal stage height. People would be like walking in like a trough watching on the stage. There was this wall behind them. It was probably about 10 feet tall or more. And I, I maybe 12 and i would get on top of it i would jump off the top of the wall and over the crowd and come down and land on the stage in front of the people oh my god people. this is this is this is gary's thought of you know ask for forgiveness rather than permission and he still did that until the end of his days at knots <laughs> <laughs> it's like freaking uh like eddie vetter dude if you ever saw any pearl jam back in the day concerts man he would climb up the top of the stage and jump into the crowd man it's like oh, man. Hardcore. I've got some good stage dive stories if you ever want to hear those. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Even Scott was like, oh, shit, now." <laughs> well, years ago, I think, Gary, this was probably, you remember when um, Bar Michaels was still in Long Beach? Yes. Okay. okay. You remember when Mel Flores was in that band Strain? No. You don't? No. Dude, what have you been fucking inhaling at work, bro? <laughs> this is the one and only time that I got in the mosh pit with Gary. Bad, <laughs> bad oh, mistake. Man. I mean, we're going, going, going. We went at the same time. We're going, going, going. Next thing I know, he's hitting me. Like, he's playing <laughs> at me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Dude. Dude. It was crazy. I used to jump a whole bunch of stupid stuff. I used to jump uh, six-foot tables at time, the time card area. Mm -hmm. Lengthways. <laughs> And uh, Damn. You, you ever go to Lakeside? Remember Lakeside? Lakeside? Early. Okay. The break room, right? The break room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And boardwalk. I, I used to go running out the exit of there and jump off and hit the hit the landing and then hit jump off and hit the bottom. I would oh go. God. And this is on break. This is not when he's on stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> this is me leaving break. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then to be more obnoxious, I never went through the, I just went over the gate also. I used to, like, this, this is Dominion days. This is, this is, you know. Yeah, this is after Lair, yeah. Yeah. You were over, it was over there in Whirlpool. Yeah, over Whirlpool. We'd, I, and I, when I, I was out of control there too, but doing that, I would go running out of the lakeside, jump off, hit the middle thing, boom, hit the bottom, running, jump over the fence, and just go running at like full speed back to my maze. And while oh I was going to the maze, I was scaring on the way to the maze. I was, I was running through boardwalk. If I saw a scare, I was hitting people left and right. So, yeah. so, so what, going what be between breaks is Spaz was the haunt evil Knievel. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Well, let, let's put it this way. I mean, the name Spaz, tell me it doesn't suit him. Uh, right. 100%. It was, it was way more appropriate back then, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gotten a little older and he's slowing down. He's, he's slowing down just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little you know, bit. You know. <laughs> That's the thing is I mentally can do a lot of this stuff, but I'm actually you know last couple of, when I when I retired in 2006, 16, you know mentally I could do like I was like yeah yeah yeah, but the body was like no no no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but wait, you retired in 2016, didn't you come back one more year? Or was that it? That was it. That was that my last year was 15. You said you were going to retire, and you came back for 16. 14 was when I said I was going to retire. 15 when I but okay. I got a good year in 14. 15 I came back at a rad year. 16, I tried to quit, and you talked me out of it. That's right. Yeah. Well, here's the problem. I remember now. See, okay, Anthony, just so you know a little bit of background, he and I worked together for years, and then towards the end of our haunt careers, I was his boss. Oh, man. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> knowing, knowing the, out, the, back, the back story of Gary and all the shenanigans he did, tell me how complicated he, make it, he made it to manage him. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was pretty... I think it was pretty. Uh, he knew that you were his manager, man. He was gonna. He was gonna test every. Uh, Dude, every, no. every single Scott was on me. 
You know, <laughs> Scott was one of the best managers I had because he could ride my ass. I never took him seriously, but you know, I was always a better monster, you know, but he, he made everyone around him better because, you know, he was a hard ass, you know, <laughs> only when people, people don't only... appreciate it, but I was like, Shh, I'm going to go out there and kick ass every night. Yeah. You know? Firm, but fair. Firm, but fair. You know, Contra what I've I'm, heard from what you told you, me, believe. fair, man. Here's firm, but fair. My work decides to send me to Saudi Arabia 2016 in October. Nice. I'm like, this sucks. You know, so I have to go into, I go into like dress rehearsal with Scott. Scott, my work, my work saying he's all, dude, can you, when do you go? And I'm all, like, second weekend. He's all, work the first weekend and then we'll term you. And I'm like, dude, that's fair. You know, yeah. I, I, I tried to do the right thing by, you know, letting him know. The only, he made a caveat, said, you know, only thing I can't give you a makeup spot. Fine. I love the first week. It's one of the best weekends. I love it. You know, you oh, know, yeah. he took totally good care of me. Yeah. 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 And then that, that was a, the, the, that last year was what, and then, you know, the, the, the best part, I, I get back from Saudi Arabia, I go to Broomball, at Broomball, the time card guy, Danny or something like that, goes, dude, I forgot to, I didn't fill out your paperwork, you're not termed, <laughs> come back whenever you want. <laughs> you're talking Halloween, about Danny Ortiz? What's that? You're talking about Danny Ortiz? I think so, yeah. Yeah, uh, he was, he was ghost town too, right, right uh, beneath Joey. Yeah. So, so, so Halloween morning, I call Scott up. Like, Scott, I'm not termed. Can I come in tonight? Scott's all, whoa, whoa, whoa what are you doing? Let me, let me check. He calls in the knots, whatever, does whatever. Calls me back like half hour later. He's all, dude, you're good. I'm all, what, he's all, what time are you showing up? I'm all, I'll be there at 7. So he let yeah. me rock my last year because Halloween nights are the best nights. So he oh, took oh, yeah. care of me right it's there. Worked. <laughs> you, know, you know? I love it. Oh, I love yeah. it so much. That's that, that, awesome. That's man. how I ended my career. I'm, I, I went out on a high note, you know. I rocked the. I, rock, I got to rock the first weekend, which is one of the best weekends. I rocked Halloween, and I said, you know what, you know, I, I, if it happens, it happens. I didn't get my rehire card. You know, I was, oh, I'm good. Yeah, you're, you're like good, I'm man. Done. Went out with the bang. You know, Stat, I did. I, you know, the funny part is, that we didn't. I didn't. Nobody knew I was coming out for that Halloween night. You know, it was a surprise. It's, so I, so I come flying out on the streets and. Uh, my the, one of my running partners, you know, Aaron Fidget, you know, frame. I, I come run up and he and these guys are like tearing people, and I go flying into that. that they're like, dude, the possum party's on, Spaz is here, and we just went out and just started just wrecking people, you know. Well, I the, the notch we put it up higher, we didn't think it'd go higher, but like the, there was like the four of us. I want to say like uh, Buff and who was else? There was like one of our other running partners. And we just started just tearing through ghost town, scare, 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 wreck, 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 you know, scream, scream. Oh, it was, it was so, like a, last night, such a high note to go out on and running with my, the, right. some of my favorite people. Dude, yeah. I, and we were just talking to Aaron last week. We had a live stream on our, on our Instagram, and he was, he was so stoked that you were going to be on the show because he was like, man, that guy's my mentor. That guy freaking was amazing. He was talking all good about you, man. Oh, dude, we had, he, he and I had so much fun together. You know, it was like, yeah. Eddie caught me when I was still kind of old, you know, so he, he didn't even see some of my best stuff, but we would go out there and we would wreck all night. It was so much funny. And he, he, the good part is like, I kind of tell him, you got to create your own character. You got to, you got to find your own way, you, you know, because don't just follow me. And so he created this thing called the possum character. He created the possum party. He started creating yeah. things that, you know, to make, to make it more fun for him. And, and he, yeah. just, he had a short career. But it was still just a ton. Of, he he put a lot of fun in a real short period. He, he did five years, right? Yeah. You five know. years. Yeah. And then I think he did a couple. I think he did a year or two in. Oh no, he did a year in managing for uh, paranormal. Paranormal. Yep. yep. Yeah. That year when I went through um, his talent, that I went through that maze one one night that I was able to go, and his talent was on point. That speaks volumes for how that kid has really matured and yeah. handled that group. I mean, everybody yeah. was on point. I mean, I wish I could say they scared me, but I can't because they, that's next to impossible. You know, mm -hmm. but everybody was just rocking it that, that time when I went through. Yeah, no, he said he had a fun time doing that. and uh, His cast were just easy to work with. They were all team, they're all team players. And I think that's why he, he always says, I guess that maze that year one maze of the year. So he's like very, he's like, that's a proud accomplishment that he got to do. Oh, yeah. There were stories where he, he said he would like go do like his like before work meeting.
But then they, they always had, he always had to tell a story about some story about in Ghost Town or some something to pump them <laughs> up. Like, all right, we did this, you know, or we did, you know, he, he always had a story to tell them to, to get the crowd like, oh wow, you know, the, the, yeah, to tell them what the next level was. And it, and I agree with you that year that maze was on point. Every time I went in there, the monsters were working. And, you know, they were doing what they could do. Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another another person that really matured that year too is Greg Daniels. When really? Took, okay. Yeah. When he took over Infected that same night, I went through there too. You know, I I I couldn't find Aaron that night, but I found Greg, and he's like, "Yeah, come on through." And going through there, his his talent was on point too. You know, it was, it was great to see that. You know, it's like, hey, you know, and I, I Greg and I had a conversation before that because I didn't think he was ready to do it. He's like, but he had. He had the some of the best people to learn from. You know, he had John Asprin and Cody there. That those two that ran infected, right? Yeah. And I go, just be like a sponge. He's like, oh, one hundred percent. And it showed. You know, his maturity level went through the roof, and how he handled things was just great. John so, Asprin's a solid dude. Yeah, you know, yeah. He's, he he was a great pickup for knots. I remember when he was at Hollywood. That's why. What What's that? That's yeah, that's where I met him. Yeah. That's them. where I met him also. Yeah. So. Sorry, Anthony. Yeah. Cutting you off, dude. It's no, like, I it's love it, man. I'm just listening. I'm I'm getting some knowledge, man. This is it's part of my job to gain knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Got to gain all the knowledge I can. I love it. I so love after it. After Dominion, did you go straight to the street, or after Larry, did you go straight to the streets, Scott? You know, I did one year in auto race. Okay. Real evil. I moved when Ron went there. I moved with him, and then in '96, that was '95, and then '96, I sat down with Craig at um, rehire and and told him what I was looking for, and he gave me the paperwork. So. And that's when I, that's about, like, I thought I was only going to do Haunt for five years. Little did I know, like, that's when my career was really going to start taking off in the Haunt industry. Yeah. And getting to Ghost Town after that, that's where I stayed, you know, until the end. You know that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, that, that, in a 90, not, or 2009, I made it to Ghost Town. And then my only, oh, yeah, my only regret, what's that? Where did you go before Ghost Town? I was in CS, tell, dude. Yeah, tell him. You gotta explain it, dude. Well, uh, I gotta say, I gotta say I this story first. So much, um, I love the hearing your story of the ghost well, I know you were. I made it to Ghost Town after being in nine years in the Gauntlet. My only regret was I never wanted to leave Ghost Town, but I wanted to do at least Carnival once in my career. You know, I was like, oh gosh, I wanted to do Carnival. I should have done it like what, like the year between or something like that. Because once I was in Ghost Town, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is the greatest scare zone ever. It's got everything I want. It's got dark and fog alley. It's got, it had lighted areas because we could do like the silver bullet was just awesome sliding and lit up. So you, yeah. if you want that, you know, you just you had the gypsy camp, you had spurs, you if anything you want to do, Ghost Town has it for you. The great oh, yeah. sliding outside birdcage on the cobblestone. Yeah. Just, and, yeah. and, and a whole righteous crew to work with. You know. Yeah. So no, you don't I, want to leave Ghost Town. That's why like every night we'd go to Ghost Town. I like it was hard because we would just sit on a bench and watch everyone work. It was so hard to want to leave because we, we, we were afraid we were going to miss something. Yeah. Yeah. Night. yeah. yeah. You do got to get out because, like, you go to like um, CS, like the Hollow last year, CS. Yeah. Dude, the Troll Brothers. That's a show, dude. You got to watch those guys. And going over in the boardwalk, those guys were fun every night, also. So I, I, I had to tear myself away from Ghost Town to go see because there's so much good work going on everywhere. It's, it's hard to see it all. Yeah. Definitely. No, yeah. I agree. We would go to uh, Hollow was a, our second place that we would love to go. There was a there was a spot we found where it was like a great sliding spot. So we got like a ton of good footage on that. And just watching them work was hilarious. Uh same with Boardwalk. Boardwalk was great and just watching them do their stuff is funny. Um I think the very underrated one from last year too was of course um what was it? Forsaken Lake. Um those yeah. guys, man, I mean, it is a small cast with that scare zone, but from what I saw when every time we went through there, man, those guys freaking, they hustled, man. Yeah. Did you get any yeah. video of the Troll Brothers over in the hollow? I may have. I got to look. I got to got Those guys of... are cracking. Those, those guys are old school CS. Because back when I was in the CS days, now I'm there, you know, yeah. we, we would goof on people. We would mess with people. We were... We were the scare zone without a filter. We were, you know, and also management never came to CS. Yeah. So we got away with like a ton of things. It was it was so I was so glad that I actually went there so I could learn so I could break all the rules before I went to Ghost Town and didn't break any. <laughs> 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 so there, there's there's this there's this little 
secret, Anthony, that you're not aware of about Gary. So, I mean, I, I'm sure I'm sure you've already devol- uh, you know, deciphered that Gary's played a number of different characters, right? Oh, yeah. Like from all the areas, Ghost Town, the Gauntlet, but there is one character that he he fails to mention because it was a flash in the pan. It was like a year, maybe two. It was called the Shadow. That was my favorite, dude. What are you my talking favorite. about? Never happened. See, see, look at. <laughs> <laughs> he just threw it under the bus. He's like, nope, didn't happen. Dude, he was dressed up in black, right? And this is where he could get away with going all over the park. Like he was a CS monster, but. Yeah. He is all in black spandex and a black mask. He'd hide in corners, run, slide, and disappear. Like, people are like, what the fuck was that? Like, Damn. One time I was over by, um, right next to the saloon on the, um, on the uh, on, uh, uh, Market Street side. There's a little tree well there where I was hanging out. I see this little guy scamper around. I knew it was him already. He comes over, and we're standing in the corner for, like, maybe five, ten minutes talking. He's like, all right, I got to go. All of a sudden he runs, and pew, and he's gone. <laughs> while he's doing that he's making people jump the whole way and he fails to mention that because he only did it for like a year was it one or two years i did about actually like four years what yeah wow i didn't know it was that long. longer than you I, thought Scott, well i used on. to do I, I only did it the thing is i only did it like well, once in a while you know i do like once or twice a year it was great it was i love that character oh it, it you're, cool. you're gonna make me admit that i did it aren't you <laughs> Yes, I, dude, it was on Ultimate Haunt. You can't deny it. Oh, yeah. Okay. In, in 2000, I was like messing around. I came up with this idea of the shadow, which was an all black character. And yeah. um, Jeff and uh, Alex and all those guys went up to bat for me to talk, convince my talent count, convince Craig, convince everyone, let him try this. Yeah. And yeah. then I, I just went out and rocked it. And I, I, I had a couple rules with it. You know, you had to go as fast as possible. You couldn't make any noise, and you couldn't have any pictures taken, and you couldn't ever let anyone focus on you. You know, yeah. if you got that scare in, you better be out of there before they realize what happened. You know? It was, it was, dude, Anthony. It was fucking pretty entertaining to watch, dude. Like, I only got to see him like one or two times at that one time when we posted up over there on a uh, schoolhouse or on um, Market Street for a minute, and I saw him go. He worked that street from where I was all the way to. Um, what is that the funnel cake shop up there just past the bottle house i saw him working the whole street the whole way not a single person actually saw what he was doing but he startled him dude you know, the that's coolest fucking thing legendary. There, there, there was a bad part about it was that the best place for it was fog alley yep yeah. it was it was just made for that character but i was in cs yeah officially yeah. And so I, every, every time I would do it, I would actually do a quick run over, run down Fog Alley, say hi to Scott and uh, uh, Wade, you know. Yeah, over on Gold Piece. I always stop by and say hi to those guys. So, so, because I didn't want to run into these guys. These guys, yeah. these guys need to know if I'm going up and down that street, I, because they, they've got their job and I, and I'm out of nowhere and I'm faster. Yeah. And it, so I, I always drop by, let them know I was there, did a couple scares and then took off. Yeah, dude. that was good too because, dude, if we didn't know he was coming. We, Guaranteed we would, have colli- we would have collided because Wade and I used to, you know, we would collide every so often because we see a good target and we both go for it. We used to com- communicate, but sometimes we we're so overzealous and into a rhythm that we just go and we go, bam, we hit each other. And <laughs> you know, it happens. Yeah. That's, yeah, that, that, that's that, freaking that, legendary. The Shadow was a lot of fun. I, you know, I busted out when I was in Ghost Town, like in 2010, once or twice or something like that. Yeah. I did like once or twice while I was actually in Ghost Town. You should do a uh, when we it do like fun. when we get back to like conventions and stuff. It should make like a cameo appearance like real quick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I'm not I'm not that skinny. <laughs> so, just be Dude, the best. I've actually seen you perform with the Brigade Man, and it is <clears throat> awesome, dude. You still have it. I mean, you. It's awesome just to watch you work, to see that, see that magic in your eyes that's still, like, I could still, I'm still doing this, man. Like, that's awesome, man. You don't see a lot of people with that these days. The yeah, only thing yeah, about, I try to pump him up. The only thing <laughs> about Gary now on the physical side is, is his knees are gone. I mean, I can tell by the way he walks and runs, but when his knees were 100%, like when he was younger, dude, it's, it was like night and day from what he is now. Yeah. Totally I, I used to be able to jump off. Of, I, there was a sarcophagus in Dominion that I would climb up the top of. And it was at least eight feet tall, and I would just jump off it all night. 
And you wonder why his knees are bad. On the cement. <laughs> yeah. You become, you wonder why he's freaking bad. Batman, dude. <laughs> you know, and uh, in, in boots, they, they were these weren't even like basketball shoes. These were like bad, you know, boots. Yeah. You know, there's pictures of me on top of it. And it's, I'm, awesome. uh, I used to jump off that. Uh, it was terrible. Well, yeah. Scott, about uh, two years ago, I, I wrecked my. Oh, uh, so I didn't wreck it. Somebody wrecked my knee. Say that again, Gary. You you bro, you stopped. Remember, like like two years ago, was uh, my knee got wrecked at Queen Mary? Not my fault. Oh well, man, that was that that was when I was gone? When I was back east? Remember? Yeah, twenty seven. Anyway, I, I I had to go to the doctor, and they oh. they, they extra in my knees, and the doctor comes in, comes back and goes, okay, the wear and tear of your knees is normal for someone your age. And I'm like. I'll take that, you know. <laughs> There's no way that the wear and tear should be normal on these knees at, you know, yeah. at a thirty-eight-year-old that's been sliding on them for twenty-five years. Ah. That's hilarious. See, considering, like, I mean, his was an accident, you know, but considering how old he and I both are, and we can still slide, is kind of you know, when you think about it, it's pretty crazy because that's a lot of damage in your knees mm -hmm. you know, and on your body itself. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll stress this. There's a lot of technique. Yes. You know, my, my technique is really good for not injuring my knees. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I come at a really nice incident angle every time. You know, yep. none of this flying squirrel stuff. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I never did the flying squirrel, but man, these guys that do the flying squirrel, their careers are just short. Yeah. I was watching actually at a Han X this past year. Uh, I, we, we were just sitting around with our cameras just filming you guys going up and down the uh, the little alley you guys had, just watching you guys do your thing, man. It was just awesome to watch. I, li I like watching that stuff, man. I don't know why. It's just it's, it's a great it's a, just watching you guys do that stuff is awesome. Dude, I get to run with Carter and Devin and Jono and James. Those those guys are so good. It's I, I'm just glad I get to hang out with them, you know? Yeah. And, and, and they're tons of fun, and their sliding is so on point, you know? Yeah. It's like, and they were pushing me to be, I don't know if you saw it said Han X, we started doing height. Yeah. I actually was going higher than I've ever done. You know? <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm pushing myself. You know, if you guys are doing it, I'm going to try. Yeah, <laughs> you know? definitely. Dude, I got to. <laughs> I, I got to, you know, there's no way I'm going to keep up with them. Yeah. But I got to at least justify, you know. We should have got Scott on some knee pads. He could have joined you. <laughs> well, I got, would you have gone to Han X and slid? I, I was, was there. there. That's where I met Anthony and Sammy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There, I was. I was in front of the brigade booth for. Oh yeah, yeah. We we talked to you for a while. We uh, the guy did the the balloons where we where we were talking, and you were there with Jeremy. Yeah. 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 We were there rapping with um with uh, Chase and and whatnot, just kind of hanging out, and you know, I wanted to go to Honex in the second year. We wanted to see how the development was. I mean, super small, but we think it's going to grow. You know, it with, is. It yeah. it got. Last year was small. This year may have seemed small, but it wasn't as small as last year. Yeah. And they gave us a good spot. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, it was actually a lot better this year than it was last year. So, And you're, they're, they're going to grow. They're going to be better next year. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I think it's, too, it's a, it's a convention made for home haunters as well. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of like haunters will go out and showcase what they have and – and you know they'll they'll demo some stuff, and you can buy some stuff. Also, it's a good little flea market for all you horror fans that just love to you know buy horror merchandise. It's awesome. Yeah, which you'll I catch love. Me, you'll catch me geared up one of these days, Anthony. Well, we gotta we gotta we gotta put that together, man. We we've already talked about doing some behind the scenes stuff. So it's a bummer you didn't go to Queen Mary um, in 2018. I know I was a year late. Night with my guys. I was a year late, man. I was a year yeah. late. I was a nope. year late, man. What are you but, doing? Until I walked uh, up. Who the fuck is that? I'm like, oh. <laughs> that, then they realized it was me, and I started running around with them. So boom. Um, Spaz, let's talk a little bit about how you got how you got started, man. What made you want to get into this industry? Okay, um, like 1984. Speaking of dating ourselves, was my <laughs> first time at Haunt. You know, as this punk teenager, you know, and I went in and, I, and a weird caveat is I actually, that was like the first time I ever hooked up with a girl in my life, Nice, you know, so, uh, so of course, you know, it, it didn't work anywhere or mean anything in life, but 
uh, of course I had to go back, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so every year after that, I was like, you know, Hey, if I'm going to go back, I'm going to be hooking up with girls, which actually never happened again. So, <laughs> That's so anyway, uh, but buying. I was like, I was about like 22. Well, once I became a monster, then we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was, I think when I was about 22, I go there and we're, we're like, I'm there with my friends and I'm just fanatically into it. You know, monsters and scaring and I'm, oh, man, I'll just, you know, and I, you know, I, I'm obnoxious to my friends are probably getting annoyed by me because of my enthusiasm. And my one friend, his name Danny, looks at me and goes, dude, why don't you just like work here? You know, like, 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 get away from me and be one of these <laughs> monsters. And it was like, oh, light bulb, you know, you know. So uh, the next year, I applied in you know, '93. That, that was like '92 to '93. I applied. I was put on hold. Whatever. I, I was given an, an extra, you know, a call in. Uh, they fired a guy named Gary working in Lair of the Vampire. Oh, shocker! They hired another Gary. They, you know, they hired, they, they fired but they fired him, you know, like a week into it, and they gave me a spot, and uh, they put me on this platform. This that's the funny part is they put me on this platform and said, and give me and strapped me to the wall and said, and it was it was over people, you know, so people would walk under, and I was supposed to reach down and scare and stuff like that, and yeah. I was up there, and you know, I'm tethered to the wall, and it's terrible, so I I never used the tether. And, but uh, this guy named Adrian Romo comes walking up one day, you know, like my first or second day, and goes, break that two by four, you know, because oh. like, there was like a two by four that supported, the, like, what was a primary whole factor for the platform. And I don't know what, why he said that to me. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm stupid, I'm young, and I'm jumping, and I'm pounding, and I'm scaring, and I'm climbing, and I snapped that two by four, you know. <laughs> So I went to Ron, or whoever our cast lead was at the time, and said, Ron, two by four is broken. Ron's like, get back up there and scare. <laughs> back then, they didn't care. You know? Yep. So, so I got back there and I was scared. It was like the platform's like one corner of the platform is broken, and I'm up there scaring. And gosh, I'm trying to remember the guy, that, the old kind of ugly, weird, crazy our tech, our tech guy for the maze. I don't remember know. tech for that maze. What's that? Okay. Anyway, he comes walking over, sees the broken two by four, and freaks out because you know it's his <laughs> responsibility. He's like, "Get down from there!" And so, <laughs> so he told me. So I got down from there, and I started go running through the. Said, All right, that gave me free reign. So I just took off and just owned the maze for like the rest of the run. Yeah, you know? I love that. that. That's, that's yeah. the start of like that's 1993. My my first year at Haunt. That's a uh, that's if you if you didn't know a definition for anarchy, there it is right there. Yeah. Dude. Well, see back then too, back then too, Anthony. I mean, obviously we, we could get away with a lot more pranks on each other too. Um, like now, now I'm going to get into the the thing I was talking about about the front room because you were talking about that running the you know just going holy chaos on the maze. So me and a few of my buddies decided to come up with this idea during the opening scene. We're gonna take the place of one of the vampire kings. The vampire king that comes in behind the bed. So we got the va what's supposed to happen is he disappears from the balcony and he pops up behind the bed, right? So instead, we crawl out behind the bed when the lights come on and we totally entrench the girl and the girl didn't know. She legitimately had a scream of terror. It's like, Wah! like that. So basically we jumped on her. <laughs> And you know, but there was two girls. So one, the first girl we did it, and it was enjoyable. The next girl we did it, she punched both of us in the jaw, right cross. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, "You guys are after." She's like, "You guys are fuckers." But hey, it was part of it. It's fun. That's it right. I've never heard that story. Yeah, I know. I was pretty low key for a long time. Mel was in on that one because he was one of the vampire kings. Who? Mel Flores. Mel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was in that, so we got rid of he. We took his place. Yeah, and did it. So yeah. it was it was pretty it was pretty great. Right, I like that. I yeah. like that a lot, man. What are some both of you? I want to hear both of you. Some of your favorite sliding stories that you guys done over the years, man. Some of the greatest scares that you've gotten. I know you, know, you guys got tons, of, man. You guys got years worth of stuff in the vault. Let's let's pull some of that stuff out, man. All right, I got one here for you. Uh, 
one night of the gauntlet, I used to just run, I used to run, 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 run. And um, there's like these three kids came to the gauntlet. And one of them was just terrified. And um, <laughs> I just got on him and I just started running him, just chase him. And one of my favorite parts about when you when you're, when you're chasing somebody and scaring them, you gotta talk shit. You know, yeah. you gotta talk, you know, you better run, boy, I'm coming for you. This monster's gonna get you, you know. Cause I always tell, <laughs> you know, if someone's coming down the street, you know, a monster talking trash, you know, making a show, you know. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm, I'm just all over this kid. You better run, boy. I'm going to get you. This monster's going to get you. And he's, ah, and he's running. And he's running. And he, he's running. Ah, he just bends over, hands on his knees, just sucking wind. And he's just, <laughs> and, and, I, and all of a sudden, I, I stand up. I, just, I start walking around. Him. Oh, yeah. You thought you could outrun the monster. You thought you were good. You thought, that. and I'm just starting, you know, and then his friends finally catch up. And the friends start joining in. So we're like, he's standing on the hands and he's, I'm walking around him talking trash. His friends are like, oh, you, that monster ran you. You can't even breathe. You know, oh, we were, oh, it was just so much fun. Oh, yeah. You know, then I went on my merry way. <laughs> there you go. On to the next one. <laughs> on to the next one. That's how it is, Talk man. my game. That's it, man. I, like, I mean, well, I think for me, like, sliding side, like, I think the best memory I have is – hitting the ground for the first time in ghost town for my very first slide in 96 like nice. being able to slide on ghost towns grounds that's probably the super cool memory um scare scare wise there's there's so many to discuss to talk about but my favorites are ones where you hit the people that they're so scared that they jump like literally over you you know or they jump and they take off in the air running and they leave their shoes behind which has happened numerous times or right. people oh, so they take the shoe. fetal position and they wet themselves. That's always good too. You yeah. know, when they wet themselves, that dude. And that's when you stand up after you see the wet spot, you stand up and you do this, and you look around for the rest of the people you're working with, and they're like, Yeah, you know. So <laughs> that's that's a good that's a I got one faint in my career. And so I, it was actually in Lair. I came I was in the 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 graveyard, I came flying out of the sky, bam, and they just bam, right on their back. Oh. <laughs> like God. And I'm like, and there was another monster there. And we both like high five. We high five each other. We're like, oh, now we, we got. <laughs> he's not getting up. <laughs> but I, you know, and I, I, I think I just bailed. Actually, <laughs> I was like, all right. That's, that's where you one. go. You like, you just kick him a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> let, let his friends handle. That's that's talent captain stuff. I got a scare. Yeah. yeah. You know, for all for all the good scares you have, you always have you know a couple bad ones, right? Like you got a bunch of good scares, you got one bad one. So. On that side, I think it was 96, my, my first year, I was working the square. Um, this, is, this is when the square still had trees in it, remember, Gary, like on the yeah. by the saloon? So yeah. we would post up next to this tree, and people would come from Market Street and make a right turn going through Calico Square. So nice. me and Wade and one of the other guys, one of the other old school guys were sliding right there in that corner. So I go and hit this slide on this girl. I got the scare, but... Can you guys see that pinky right there? Yep. Yep. Okay. So what happened was I slid by her. Timing was just off. She happened to step down on my pinky. Ugh. So my body went Mach 1 forward. My finger went Mach 5 backwards. Oh, my God. It peel off my glove, but it totally oh. – Yeah. Eey. So, But you know what? It hurt like a motherfucker. My whole hand heated up. So, and the steel ripped off. I couldn't even put the steel back on, so I had to put it on duct tape it. But my my pinky was this tall because I couldn't steel all the way down. So two hours later, Craig comes over. He's like, "Hey, and I what's up?" He's like, "I heard what happened." I go, "What?" He's like, "Your finger." And he's like, "You okay?" I said, "Yeah." And I show it to him. He's like, "Oh." I go, "It's sore, but I'm fine. I can finish the rest." And I was like, "Okay, you have any problems? You let me know." So um, later on that week, during the week, I had to call. It's like. I called Craig and said, okay, Craig, here's the deal. He's like, all right, come on in. Let's have our guys look at it. And then they sent me to get it taken care of. But that, that was probably the worst, the worst injury I've ever had sliding. Oof. And it's, it's, it's nature of the beast. It's part of the business. You know, I mean, yeah. you, when you decide to become a slider, it's, it's, an, what's, it's a, what's the, an unmentioned risk that you take. So, you know, it just happens. Definitely. Should we talk about Mr. Craig Harold for a couple seconds? Because he is the hot father, you know. Yes. He, yes. He, he made my career, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, 
two the year was 2000 and a weird coincidence i called my, i called josh mickelson out of the blue one day we're just hey come on and he's all dude i'm gonna go hang out with these guys and we're gonna do lunch you want to come along well sure and so i ended up with going to lunch with a uh, mike hardy ron brunette and jeff you know long and uh, a very young kenny hardy was there oh, what's that i said oh geez i know dude that all oh. dude all old, old cs was hardcore and um and they're, they're like oh we're going to knots today to get you know get josh like i'm gonna go get on the streets you want to go and i'm like sure whatever you know so we go walking in there and they go they, they go talking to craig and next thing you know josh and i are filling out pipe paperwork going to cs and yeah. uh that, that was actually how you got on the streets back in the day yeah nice no, no auditions, recommendation yeah nice so, you know so that's the, awesome the the the, 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 the yeah, this, you just brought you just struck a memory with me gary yeah. so this is this is jeff long's first year this is when i met him and and after that he actually worked at knots as a year-round guy for a long time he was actually a tour guide at one point in in the haunted shack after that i saw him when he had short non-colored hair dude but anyway, <laughs> so i don't believe it down, we're sitting down talking to this guy hiring right it's me and, and jeff and the guy's talking about placement and he says to Jeff, he's like, oh yeah, I'm taking the year off. So you're going to take my place on camps in camp Snoopy. Here's your paperwork. And I, it's funny because Jeff brought this up in uh, origins, Gary. Yeah. He, I look at him. I look at Jeff. I go, dude, you just got a street spot. And Jeff had no fucking idea what that was. I go, you're lucky. You're a lucky bitch type of thing, you know, because I've been, I had been wanting a street spot for a couple of years already, you know, so, and that's when he got put in CS and that's when it was the, uh, the hoodlums, the street punks. Yeah. Street punks. So I had rad a mass. And then after Jeff got over there and then Phil, and there was one other one, they really started developing it into the gauntlet. So, Alex Robles? huh? Yeah. Alex. Alex Robles? Yeah. What's up dog? <laughs> retired boy scout mask what's up dog if he's watching <laughs> what's up alex <laughs> decide to talk those guys those guys took the new new levels yeah yeah they 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 they, they had visions they, they were in cs but there were not a lot of rules and not a lot of respect yeah you know? yeah and so they were like we're just gonna go nuts so here and they they created a or they actually created the awards banquets and stuff and phil yeah. Jeff and Wade and a few others really got together to create Ahab, yeah. and that that was that was a good thing for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but they had the CS Awards banquet before that that blossomed into Ahab, and yeah. uh, they they we we had such a tight crew in the CS that we would I think we would lose like four monsters a year. It was wow. like everyone came back year after year. Once you got in, you know, it was like you didn't want to leave. You yeah. let it. It was yeah. a it was a huge coup when Jeff and Alex went to Ghost Town. Oh, it, it, dude, oh, that yeah. was huge. And you know the thing is, is like after I started working streets and I saw how things started developing, I knew that was going to happen at some point. Right. You know, just just knowing, you know, getting to know Jeff over the years. Same thing with Alex, their personalities. I knew they'd come over. Same thing with Paul Frechette and Mike Reichman when they right. came over too. You know, they came over. Well, Paul Frechette and Mike Reichman, we asked Craig if we could have them come over um, for, for like a couple hours in 97. And he said, yeah. So they came over. So immediately we're like, Craig, can we please have these guys next year if they want it? You know, and sure enough, and, you know, that's what happened. You know, Paul stuck with it for a lot of years. Mike uh, ended up quitting because he became a cop. So, um, you know, but it's. It's, it's a lot of those things where there's so much transition, but what that really helped though too, and Gary, you can, you can back me up on this one, is that it really helped build a, a, a unity between all the street zones because before that, there was one person that worked at Knott's that kind of oversaw the street zones that created a lot of animosity between the zones. She would tell one zone, oh, they're better than you. Oh, they said this. And so it, I, I understand what she was thinking. She's trying to create... Every, you know, raise the bar for everybody to do better, but it created animosity with, you know, with the groups against each other. And that was a problem. You know what I mean? I mean, and the thing is, the thing is sad is too, is there's a lot of, I mean, Gary, you can probably even speak to this too, is that there's a lot of CS 
people now that I think still hold on to that and they know nothing about it. I'll say, well, from my perspective, when I here's here's a, here's a contrast. When I was in CS, I hated Ghost Town. See, I I, I mean, contrast is confirming. We, no, we, <laughs> no, we we were taught that. That is that that's you know, you come to CS, you hate Ghost Town. That was you know, kind of what we were. Uh, you know, you don't know any better. I'm 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 some punk kid. You know, I, I think I'm all hot shit. I'm oh, God, cool. I'm going to I'm get to go to go, you know, CS. Oh, dude, we're the best. We're the best. You know, if you don't want to get go scared, go to Ghost Town. You know, we talked all this trash on Ghost Town, and uh, compared to the rest. So I go to go to Ghost Town, 2009, and I'm there and I'm rocking it. No one in Ghost Town cared about CS. No one in Ghost Town ever talked trash on CS. No, they didn't talk trash on any other scare zone. They went out, <laughs> did their job. They scared. They had fun. They liked each other. And I was like. Oh, this is nice. You know, I, you know, right. it, yeah. it got me out of that big hate mindset. You know, yeah. that 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 was that was happening while I was there. You know, there was, so right. much, there was a lot of hard work that went in from a lot of, a lot of talent. You know, to help break those walls down. You know, it took a lot, a lot, a lot of hard work to really get people to understand. You know, to start fostering the unity, the unity of it, because I mean, if you think about it, the community, Hong community, is big, but it's still really small, especially within a park. You know, in the street zones, I mean, it's not about who's better; it's it's about what what everybody brings to the table as an entirety for a large event of that uh, an event of that scale. I mean, it's it's yeah. basically huge. Because you want people coming back talking about like, hey, you know, I went to this event and they did these amazing scares compared to that event, who you know. Didn't yeah. do so much of a good job, you know what I mean? Like you want people talking about your event. Yeah, I will say this: I don't see the hate in CS. Doesn't hate Ghost Town like it did, you yeah. know that 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 stuff that got squashed a lot because people bounce in squares scare zones all the time now. Yeah. Back then, it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, you know? no, it didn't. But I, I noticed too. Like, I mean, I haven't been there like for what four years now, but I did notice that when I was there, my last year, there's a lot of the younger talent that were there were still hanging on to the old CS mentality of we hate this area. You know, they didn't say it, but you could tell by their by their actions. You know, and that thing, I mean, obviously, I don't know um, how it is now, but I, from what I see, it looks like everybody's kind of mingling. Everybody hangs out, you know, from what I see, but whatever. You know, it's, it is what it is. And I, I don't see it anymore. I see it the, because people bounce in scare zones left and right all the time yeah. now. Back then, it didn't happen. Now it's like, okay, I'm working in the CS this year. But I worked in Boardwalk last year and Ghost Town the year before. And, you know, the, yeah. it's a lot of people have worked a lot of scare zones. Yeah. And and because of that, now you don't. Now you go. People are like I can't hate that because I was. The, I've got my friends and family there. You know. Right. Everyone's actually. It's much more friendly in go in. You know, between the scare zones, there's still competition, but it yeah. wasn't the pure hate that I had. For, you know, yeah. when I started in CS. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Anthony, I don't know if I touched on this in our last podcast, but um, outside of just the park, there was a lot of animosity within groups, especially the sliders, you know, and that's why, like, after 10 years of work, that's why Lee and I, you know, we worked on putting together that Sliders Unite show in 2016, the first year. That was the right. inaugural year of that. Um, the, the biggest reason why we did that, one, because there was a lot of, us that worked together at Knots that wanted to work together again, but even more so to really bring together these groups from different areas because for a long time, Knots and Queen Mary, when it was shipwreck, there was a lot yeah. of antagonistic animosity towards each other. And it, it shouldn't have been that way, you know? I mean, it's not like everybody's like, oh, we're better than them. We have better sliders, whatever. But so our main focus was to bring these all these factions together. I mean, it was kind of a bummer because we couldn't bring in anybody from Magic Mountain. We didn't know anybody there. But yeah. it was, you know, it was it was Knots, it was Queen Mary, we had some from Universal, and we had some of the brigade there, all working together, work, doing the sh two shows and freaking scaring together outside the shows. And that was more fun than actually doing the shows for me. You right. know. But it was it was pretty cool to see everybody just crushing guests together you know <laughs> it was awesome that was like the first sold out wednesday in like queen yep. mary ever yeah you know yeah. I, I was there that was rad yeah like, no that's so the, that's the wise brothers be. weren't there the first year the who the wise brothers uh from G G G magic mountain 
Probably. Uh, what's that? Probably. That's probably why, because we didn't know anybody. Uh, Lee didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody from, from Magic Mountain. Oh, those, the, well, those guys showed up the next year then. Yeah, that was 2017 when I was yeah. gone already. Those guys are great. You know, they, they, you know, those are some of the best. They're building a crew up there, up at that Magic yeah. Mountains. You know, those, they've got their own sliding crew now. Yeah. And, yeah. We're know, actually I, fortunate enough to know a couple of those uh, characters um, the from society. the Tormented Society. Yeah, they're a, a straight up up and coming group. Um, those guys are kicking ass, man. They yeah. really are. Um, I think we're talking about like Fright Club, you know, those guys, the, the ones actually work in Magic Mountain. Yeah, these guys work at Magic Mountain. They have their own clique, Gary. Yeah. Um, the Tormented Society. Some of my guys are in it too. But okay. A group that is based out of Magic Mountain. Okay. And they they work there and they do things there too. You I know don't know them. Means that those guys over there, it's, I've, I've had a few conversations with Jinx and his girl, the, the two that really put that together. I'm actually yeah. going to be. Once we actually are out of this quarantine, um, if we can arrange it, I'm going to be doing slider clinics with for them. Cool. That's going to be cool. No, yeah. definitely. Yeah, um, we're we're working a lot behind the scenes with them as well to to bring some some behind the scenes footage uh, for both channels because we we have a really good partnership going with them, um, and they they do good on us. We do good on them, and that's something I want to do is just have everyone just get together. And I think that's another thing I want to I want to talk about is did you guys ever think back in the day sliding that it would ever come to this point like it would be as big as it is today mm, i mean i knew it was always going to be a staple but as far as the growth on where it's gone now no i mean i don't know about you gary what do you think do you think it you know it was going to get as big as it is now it was always ghost town against cs we're always trying to pit against each other so what this is this is why i quit you jerk i quit broomball because of this one year he decides to bring on like three or four semi-pro hockey players right damn it gary froze again yeah it's just froze something weird this happened okay can you can you hear us though i can hear you this time okay yeah, that's all that matters i can hear you he he brings on three or four semi-pro hockey players to play against us right these fuckers played dirty they smashed my head up against the goal post twice so i said fuck this i'm done i'm never coming back <laughs> and i blamed it on him because he's the one that invited him it was alma's sons was it? Yeah. Well, they played dirty. Sasha and what's his name? I don't know. I had a welt on the right side of my head for like a month. All right. I didn't yeah. know about that. Yeah. I know. I didn't tell you. I just stopped playing after that. <laughs> <laughs> right Dude, there. I was there when, uh, when Ferret took the – when Pigeon and I whacked Ferret in the eye socket with a stick. That was a bad one. Yeah. yeah. I heard about that one. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was – there was there were some bad injuries, you know. I, I ended up with a Harry Potter scar on my forehead. I can't show you. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, you're frozen. Yeah. We had a nice smile like? though. That'd be the rest of the the podcast is just you know his audio, but a nice smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least you got a good picture of me. I think. Good All picture. Right. Yep. There you go. So, I just see myself right here in the corner. There you go. Hand corner. I see. I see you guys' mugs on the screen. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, like I said, though, earlier, you know, sliding has just become such a unique tool to use with scare acting and scaring. And, man, it's just it's starting to really blow up now. It, like you, you, every year it's starting. People are starting to take it to the next level. Um, you're starting to see groups form. You're starting to see more people get into this. You're starting to see a lot of. Uh, a lot of people just getting involved with it, man. And just think, you guys were some of the, like the OGs behind it, man. Yeah, true. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna lay claim to being, you know, OG guy to to get sliding to where you know we're wearing skate pads because that wasn't me. That was that was Todd Stubler and and Gordon. But um, Todd is the one that's kind of the guy that really started. Picking up the pace on sliding, making it faster, longer with the ramp pads and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's things that I brought to the table in the very beginning, you know, that still resonates heavily today. You know, right. some on the equipment side, some on the, the, you know, actual, I guess you could say ability side, trick side, whatever you want to call it. Um, right. But to see what some of these kids are doing now is just incredible. You know, yeah. 
Enthusiasm is awesome. You know, um, I hope they take care of themselves so they can do this as long as they can and leave when they want to leave and not leave because they got hurt. Right. So, Gary, you still there, bro? Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm yeah. just trying to see if I can fix the, the what's going on with this camera thing. Yeah. You can, I just turn it off and turn it back on, maybe. All right. Let's try that. So, looking at his face, just his frozen face. Beautiful. Yeah. You, you're sneering at me in your frozen face. So. <laughs> it's a portrait. It's beautiful. He took a snapshot of it, so he's got yeah. that forever. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, I did take a snapshot. Can you see? Did, did it show up there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, 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 Scott's annoyed at me again. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's anything new? I would say that's the usual way he looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually looking at him, shaking my head. Oh man, <laughs> when he was my boss, <laughs> I gave his neck a good workout. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> not again. <laughs> uh. So I, I used to do that to Craig Harold also. <laughs> I didn't have like 90 other people I had to hand, deal with besides him, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, man. I mean, I, like I said, though, I, I love watching, um, like I said, we're watching people, we're watching people grow into this now. We're seeing, you know, like I said, we're seeing people form stuff. We're seeing people give it a shot. We're seeing people go out there and, and, and give it their all. And, um, it's like what what you're trying to do with with your uh, with your company, Scott. Uh, slider Dynamics. You know? Yeah. You're trying to teach people how to properly slide and and what it what it takes to do the sliding and and how it's just more than just putting on knee pads and, and gloves and going out there and doing it. You're teaching them the the proper way to really you know stretch and 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 get fit for it and and yeah. the proper way of, of safety of doing it. Which you know you would have said you would have looked ten years ago there would have been not not a program out there like that. But yeah. you look there today, and there's a pro. There's going to be a program out there available for for people who want to learn how to do this. Yeah, I'd like hey, to pipe in on the sliding here, and well, don't use it as a crutch. To all you. monsters, on that. sliding is a great tool for scaring. Learn right. twenty other ways. Just don't don't be just one of those monsters who slides. Learn other methods, you know, because you can't do it your whole career. And there's so much when you're out there. There's so many ways to get a scare, and, sli and sliding is fun and great as, as it is. Don't don't rely on it, you know. Right. Hone that skill, but make sure you got a whole pocket full of ways of scaring. Yeah, right. it's only one additional way to make your character better. I mean, mm -hmm. you got to develop a character first, and you add that to the bag of tricks. You don't be a slider and then be a character second. It's the other way around. Yeah. Right. No, I agree. No, it's I, and I, I'm not really I'm not you know really one to talk because I'm not really a character or anything. But I do like it when people can get creative because um, sliding is a very unique tool that you can use in your arsenal. But I do like it when people get creative as far as when they how they scare me and and where it comes from because you know there's like 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 Spaz said there's so many different ways to to scare a person and you know sliding is just one of those unique tools that you can use uh, when necessary. Yeah. So when I used uh, to take rookies under my wing, I used to tell them that I'm all go out there, going down the street, figure out the best way to scare at that moment. Uh, sometimes it's a slide, sometimes it's a stare, sometimes it's a, a grab, sometimes it's a jump, a lead, a, a lunge, whatever. But learn a whole book because because there's gonna be some nice thing when it rains and you can't slide. What are you mm -hmm. gonna do? Yeah. You know, there's right. there's I'm a lot of people that you know, very people have a meltdown when it rains because they can't slide. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. glad I was never in your spot when that happened. It's like it's time to go puddle jumping, you know. Go go get wet. You know, right. make wet. Wade used to love doing that. Oh, dude, same here, dude. You ever you ever see Chief during the? Oh, you never saw Chief back in the day during the rain. I oh never, man, that guy would like do belly yeah. flops. You know, oh, man. he'd yeah. go. He would splash people to get scares. You know, with, with like his belly. Yeah. <laughs> Chief see, was what, amazing. You know in ghost town is Trish and Allie when they were still there on rainy days, like fog alley used to get very flooded before yeah. they did the floor. You see it really flooded. So get flooded. What Trish and Allie would do is bring out an inflatable alligator. Nice. <laughs> no, joke. no joke, you know, and they used to scare with it. That's rad. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's I don't cool. Know if those two ever watch these podcasts, but dude, those two were pretty entertaining to watch. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no. That's, awesome. that's awesome that's awesome so 
Man, it's. I think I've learned so much today, and I pretty, there's pretty there's probably a lot more I can learn. So maybe I think <laughs> definitely we're gonna have to do another one of these. I know me and Scott have been talking about getting a group of people together to do one. As soon as this damn quarantine lets up, dude, we all need to come in the studio. Right? Dude. We will we will get that scheduled, man, because that is something that I think the people would love. I think the people want to see all the old school guys get together and just go on, go ham on it. You know, like I like I told you when I was telling you the other day, I got I have I'm still in contact with a lot of the old school guys. You yeah. know, I still I, I can still reach out to Todd. I can still re- reach out to Wade. I mean, Wade lives in Denver now, but, you know, I'm in contact with those guys still. Get get Skype, man. If we get everyone else in person, get him Skype, we're good. Uh, That'd be awesome. And Todd's, I a, lot of, Todd's I a lot of fun. You got to get Todd on this. With some old school guys, too. Yeah. yeah. We got we to gotta you know, set something you know, up. Anthony, like, this quarantine lets up. You get all of his, a bunch of the old school guys in sitting at a round table, and you're just doing an interview, a podcast yeah. interview. That'd yeah. Get the camera's going. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You got to go hire a couple camera people. Get that shit going. At least you don't format it, so shit's going to go sideways, guaranteed, because that's just the way the, the way the, all of us work. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I, I expect a lot of roasting, probably. You know, oh, some yeah. of the funniest stories, you know. I, I just, I, I can't wait to do that one. We got to do this again, definitely. Gentlemen, before we sign off, and this one's going to go. Well, maybe Scott can answer this one, too, because we talked a little bit about it before the podcast. And Scott knows what the last question is always on every podcast. Yep. Uh, yep. So both this one goes for both of you. The hardest question usually uh, on every podcast that we do, because we, we like to keep that, that, uh, that horror movie uh, base around the podcast. Uh, after 100 episodes, what started as a horror movie news podcast and ended up getting people on pretty much like a talk show in a way. Um, we like to ask our guests, what is your favorite scary movie of all time? Gary, you answer first. I think I'd go with The Thing. Oh. You know, Kurt it. Russell, Antarctica. Okay. Yeah. That's a good yeah. one. Very good. You know, it's, just, so, it's just so brutal. Yeah. Right? It's raw and a lot of practical effects in there. You Can't know. go wrong with Carpenter, man. Yeah, and, no, and no, no, no good resolution either. You know, just two guys sitting in the snow, going, "Well, what's going to happen now?" We're yeah. fucked. <laughs> so, for me, well, like, what I, was your Scott? Well, okay, the first podcast I did, like, I mean, I just brain farted, and it's I don't know why because I answered the same to everybody that asked me, but initially I I said, which is a great movie, which it's Rob Zombie's version of Halloween, where Tyler Maine was Mike Myers, right? Okay. Where they did the story based on Mike's life and not the people he terrorized. Great movie. I love it. But my actual favorite scary movie of all time is The Shining. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Jack Nicholson. Psycho oh, yeah. factor of it. Just, it's the shit. <laughs> Over okay. Hotel. Here, here's an opinion here. Uh, the elevator scene in The Cabin in the Woods is better than the elevator scene in The Shining. Ooh. I don't think I've even watched The Cabin in the Woods, dude. I, I have to. I think I have to agree with you on that, just because the fact that you see so many iconic creatures come out, and there's a lot of Easter eggs around it, dude, which is cool. Watch, so. watch, watch that scene in slow mo, and realize how much is going on in that elevator scene. Yeah, and you know, it's only like ten seconds long, and it's just like some of the most epic movie. You know, you, you just you the, there's monsters tearing people in half. You know, and just. The, the elevator, it's like all these guys with guns, and they're like, you know, you can see fear, then boom, monsters. You know, Good so, old I, horror. I love it. That's great. At one point, there's even a unicorn in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's Not great. The bear, man. <laughs> great. It's great. Ke- um, watch out for Kevin. Yeah, definitely. No. It was funny because earlier you guys were talking about uh, the whole ghost town and the CS thing and how that – it was kind of like in, embedded in, in Spaz's head, like kind of like a subliminal messaging and stuff. Really reminded me of the movie They Live, um, where literally when he puts on the glasses, you see everything. It just says watch TV, you know, sleep and all that. So Obey. Yeah, like, consume. Yeah, yeah consume. consume. It's great. You got, Roddy, you got Roddy Piper in that movie, one of the greatest movies ever made. Dude, dude it's got the greatest it's, one-liner in any movie, you know. I, yeah, like, I, 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 I had to buy that t-shirt. face is what I see. 
I came here to chew chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm fresh out of bubble gum. I, I had to buy that T-shirt the minute I watched that movie. I was like, "Yep, doing it." Um, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for celebrating the 100th episode of the Mindless Heart Podcast with me today, with some amazing stories that uh, first time ever heard. I guess with me, and if you've told other people, or if no one has hasn't listened, hasn't heard it first time for them as well that's the one thing we love doing is, is sharing some some haunt stories to keep everyone going and um everyone just who's in love with this event like like i am uh they get to hear the history and and hear it through different people's perspectives which i think is awesome yeah especially cool. thanks, thanks for inviting me anthony I'm, I'm glad you hooked scott up with this one also i didn't know he was going to be involved when you invited me it makes it yeah. 10 times better dude definitely no, yeah. I thought it was going to go totally sideways, but we're actually pretty well behaved today. <laughs> <laughs> I always jumped out of my chair like once. It's done. <laughs> yeah. Done. Um, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you guys out there, and hopefully we'll do one of these again pretty soon. Um, oh, he said he lost us again. Yep. Damn his computer. Damn his computer. Anyway... Should I get him back in so we can properly end this? Or yeah, it's up to you, dude. This is your show, man. All right, he's he's out of there. Never mind. It would be just me and you. Good old cool. times, right here. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be sure to follow Slider Dynamics as well on on Instagram. Keep up with that. Um, we got Gary chiming in on the message. I hope those pop up on the, on the video, dude. That'd be great. Yeah, they're coming up on my side, so I think so. Yeah, that'd be funny. So. Thank you so much again to Gary for coming on, uh, sharing his stories, and we can't wait to do this again. And with that being said, that was the Lost Podcast between Scott Niederman and Gary Spaz. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Uh, this is future me talking. <laughs> uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, and if you did, leave a like, uh, comment down below, and subscribe with the notification turned on. Be aware every time I put up a new video. Follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. We will see you guys again real soon for another episode of the Miles Horror Podcast. You're moving into